Ah, I was wondering when you'll wake up. You were badly injured when I found you. Hey, there's no need to be afraid. I realize waking up in an unfamiliar place may startle you, but there's no danger here. You're safe, and I'm unarmed. I promise I'm not going to hurt you. I know it can be hard to trust a stranger's words, but take a moment to observe yourself. You're covered in bandages, and you're not bleeding anymore. Now who do you think patched you up? That's right, I did. That's okay. I don't blame you for reacting that way. My face doesn't look the friendliest. Yes, you have a point there. A seven-foot-tall orc towering over you while you're injured would be... unsettling. Perhaps I'd seem less intimidating if I introduce myself first. My name is Igug. What's yours? That is a very fitting name for a brave adventurer like you. Not many people would explore dungeons all by themselves. Here, drink some water. Hydration is important for good health. How are you feeling? Ah, you're in much pain. Do you feel pain in certain areas of your body? Do you feel more pain in certain areas of your body? No. Hmm. So I didn't miss any wounds while I was healing you. Sounds like you're just feeling some soreness. That's normal after an intense fight. Sorry, I don't have any potions to help with the pain. The Mercy's Inkberry plant needed for a painkiller potion is very expensive. It's rare, and can only be found in the Valley of Devil Wraiths. Not many adventurers are willing to risk their lives for that plant. If you'd like, I can make you moonshine tea to help you sleep off the pain. You would rather stay awake. Okay, if you insist. Hmm. I know a touch spell that may help. Yes, I do know magic despite being an orc. In fact, I specialize in healing spells. Once you're done getting over your shock, please hold my hand. Thank you. Pasiri <sighs> Simul. Yeah, it worked like last time. Do you feel any better? You do. And you feel lighter. That's good to hear. No, that wasn't a pain removal spell. That was a pain transferal spell. Yes. I took on around 20% of your pain. Don't worry about me, though. I can still manage to do my daily chores and take care of you. The first person I used that pain transference spell on was my father. He had very bad back pain, and it'd keep getting worse. That stubborn old man insisted on working himself to the bone, even though he needed to rest. I didn't like seeing my father in pain, so I created this healing spell to help him. <laughs> what I did afterwards is one of the most selfless and stupid things I have ever done. I tried taking away all of his back pain. That's right. All of it. I screamed like a baby. It got too much and I fainted. The funniest part was, I only managed to take half of it. <laughs> ah, yeah. Me and my old man both rested in bed after that. 
He yelled at me to not do that again. But I think it was worth it, because ever since then, he's been taking better care of himself. Yeah, I'm glad everything worked out too. Ah, sorry for rambling. I get talkative whenever I'm reminded of my family. Is there anything else you need? You had a question for me. Well, what is it? How did I become a healer? <sighs> that is a bit of a long story. I grew up in a family of eight, so money was always tight. To make ends meet, my father, my older brother, and I took on dangerous mercenary jobs. I realized that half the money we'd earned would be spent on the healing spells we drank after fights, so I started looking into healing spells to help save us money. On my fifteenth winter, I finally learned the basic healing spell. My father didn't approve. Scolding me about using magic was dishonorable and a form of cheating. However, times were desperate and I was saving the family a good bit of money. Without it, we'd have to skip meals. So eventually, he let me do whatever I wanted. I developed my healing powers at home for some years. Then one day, my father banned me from using healing magic again. Well, my younger siblings grew up and were able to take up part-time jobs. So we finally had enough money to live comfortably and times weren't desperate anymore. My father didn't want the whole family to be cheating weaklings, as he put it. Eh, I don't blame him. He's a man of tradition, and he only wanted what was best for his wife and children. He may be hard-headed, but he's a good, righteous man. Still, I did not appreciate him saying I couldn't heal people again, so I left home and traveled to many cities in search of a job as a healer. <laughs> no one wanted to hire an orc healer. A lot of them thought I was joking and laughed me out of their office. The few people who did consider me ended up hiring an elf instead. Yes, I suppose you could call it racism. It used to bother me, but not anymore. I don't care what other people think of me. As long as I do my best to bring good into the world, that's enough. Since I couldn't find work in the cities, I decided to do something different. I found a good spot in the woods and built this cabin we're staying in right now. Then I reached out to some druids. I asked them to ask their bird friends to help me. I had a deal for the birds. If they help me find injured travelers, I'll provide them food. After doing the druids a few favors, they agreed to relay the message. Mm-hmm. My plan did work. I've had birds lead me to several patients over the years. Not all of them had the money to pay for my services, but I don't mind. It's easy to live in the woods when you know how to hunt for food. Oh, thank you for the gold. I appreciate it. Speaking of food, I'm going to go cook us some dinner. Do you have any allergies? All right, I'll take note. I hope you like deer meat stew, because I'll be making a lot of it. It should be ready in about 20 minutes. I'll see you then. <laughs>